we present we present the court scene of merchant of venice is the merchant antonio here yes your grace i am sorry for you you have a heartless adversary Shylock is an inhuman wretch with no pity and mercy. Your Grace, I heard that we have tried very hard to persuade Shylock to withdraw his unreasonable and cruel case against me. But he's adamant and prepared to fight his anger with my patience. I am ready to accept the verdict of this court of justice. Someone? Go and call Shylock into the court. He is ready at the door. He comes, my lord. Make room. <laughs> and let Shylock stand before us so everyone can see him. Shylock, the world thinks, and I also think that you lead a strange and cruel life. You have come here today to claim a pound of flesh of or and poor Antonio, the merchant, which he owes according to the agreement he signed with you, because he failed to pay back the money that he borrowed from you by the due date. A court request that you show some human gentleness, love, and sympathy. Think of the merchant's losses, have pity on him, and make an alternative demand. A court expects you to show some courtesy and give a gentle answer. I have told your grace what I desire. I shall have what is due to me. I shall not forfeit my bond of one pound of flesh of Antonio. Really? I really? dislike really? and detest. That is my answer. This is the answer, you cruel man. I'm not bound to please you with my answers. Do all men kill the things that do not love? Does a man hate anything that he would not kill? <laughs> Every offense is not a hate at first. Would you like a snake to bite you twice? My lord, it is no use asking the Jew to be soft and kind. I request you not to make him any more offers. Let me have judgment and the Jew his will. I offer you 6,000 ducats for your three. I shall have my bond. You cannot expect any mercy as you do not offer mercy to others. I have done no wrong, so I do not fear any judgment. When I ask you to free your slaves, you will say that you bought the slaves with their money. So I answer you. I bought the pound of flesh of Antonio. It is mine. It is mine. It is mine. And I shall have it. Silence. 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 I shall wait for Bellario, a learned doctor who will help me in deciding this case. My lord, a messenger from Padua has brought the letters from the doctor. Call the messenger. Let us see the letters. Cheer up, Antonio. Have courage. I shall fight for you. The two shall have my flesh, blood, bones, and all before he harms you. Bassanio, my friend, it is my time to die. You live and write my epitaph. Have you brought some message from Bellario in Padua? Yes, my lord. Bellario sends you his greetings, your grace. Why do you sharpen your knife so seriously? To cut the flesh of the bankrupt Antonio. Listen, you, you are sharpening your knife, but your jealousy is sharper than your knife. Are there any pairs sharp enough that can enter your heart? No. 
There is none. Oh, you dirty dog. I do not waste my breath. I'm here for the law and want my bond. This letter from Bellario recommends a young, young and learned doctor to our court. Where is he? He's outside and I very your consent to admit him. With all my heart, some of you go, greet him courteously and bring him to the court. In the meantime, the clerk shall read out to the court the letter from Bellario. Your grace, when I received your letter, then I was sick. But at the time when your messenger came, I had young visitor with me from Rome, a doctor of law, whose name is Balthazar. I told him about the case between Shiloh, the Jew, and Antonio, the merchant. We discussed the case at length and consulted many books. He is fully familiar with the case and my opinion. So because of his learning and knowledge of the case, I recommend him strongly, your grace, to fill my position in your court. His age should not be an impending factor as he is extremely bright and intelligent for his age. I leave it up to your grace to accept this young lawyer and allow him to take my place in the court. You have heard what the learned Bellario has written. And here I understand, is the young doctor? Give me your hand. Has old Bellario sent you? Yes, my lord. You are welcome. Take your place. Are you acquainted with the case and the question in the court? I'm thoroughly informed of the case. Which is the merchant here? And who is the Jew? Antonio and old Shiloh, both stand forth. Is your name Shiloh? Shiloh is my name. You have lost a strange case, but according to Venetian law, we have to proceed without disputing your demand. You are the one who is in danger, is it not? Hi, sir. Do you agree to the bond? I do. Then the Jew must be merciful. Tell me, why must I be merciful? Mercy is enthroned in the hearts of kings. It is an attribute to God himself. Consider this Jew. Although you seek justice, no one should be harmed. God teaches us all to be merciful. If you follow the teaching and reduce your demand, then this court of Venice will be able to give a reduced sentence to the merchant. I want the law and full execution of my bond. Is the merchant not able to pay back the money? Yes, here I give for him in the court, two times the money he borrowed. If that is not sufficient, I will give 10 times the money. If that is not accepted, it will appear that Maris will overwrite truth. I beseech you, your grace, use your authority to do something to stop this evil man from getting what he desires. It cannot be. There is no power in Venice which can change an official order of law. If that is done once, it will set a precedence that will lead to many misjudgments in future. It cannot be. A great judge. Oh, wise young judge. How I honor and respect you. I pray you. Let me see the bond. Here it is, most reverend doctor. Here it is. Charlotte, you have been offered three times the money you had lent. An oath. An oath I made an oath to heaven. I do not want to be guilty of perjury for bringing peace and happiness to Venice. Why? This bond is genuine, and by law, the Jew may claim a pound of flesh of Antonio. 
he may cut it from near as the martyr's heart. Be merciful. Take three times your money and allow me to tear up this bond. It appears that you are a worthy judge. You know the law. Your explanation of the case has been very clear and sound. I charge you by the law to give your judgment. No man can make me change my demand. I want to stick to the agreed bond. I beg the court to give its judgment, which I shall happily accept. Why then, the judgment is as follows. You must prepare your bosom for Charlotte's knife. Oh, noble judge, oh, excellent young man. By law, this penalty is due according to the signed bond. It is very true. Oh, wise, an upright judge, you are far wiser than your looks and age. Therefore, Antonio, lay bare your bosom. Yes, his breast. So says the bond. Is it not, noble judge? Nearest his heart. Those are the very words. <clears throat> It is so. Are there balance here to weigh the flesh? I have them ready. Charlotte, have some surgeon ready to stop his bones so that he does not bleed to death. Is it mentioned in the bond? It is not mentioned as such, but what does it matter? You can do that much for charity. Uh, I cannot find it. It is not in the bond. You merchant. Have you anything to say? No, I have little to say. I am all prepared to pay. Give me your hand, Bassanio. I bid you farewell. Do not grieve and think that this happened because of you. I consider myself fortunate that as per custom, I shall not live to be an old and miserable man when all my wealth is gone. Fate cuts me off from such punishment and misery. Tell about me to your honorable wife how Antonio met his end. Tell her that Bassania once loved this friend of his. But do not feel sorry that you lost him because he did not feel sorry that he died because he paid your debt. If the Jew cuts deep, I'll pay the debt willingly. Antonio, Antonio, I am married to a wife, which is as dear to me as life itself. But I am ready to sacrifice everything, my life, my wife, and all the world, and give everything to this devil to save you. If your wife was here, she would thank you a little for offering your life for your friends. I have a wife whom I love very much. I wish she was in heaven so that she could have some power there to change the mind of this angry Jew. It's good that you make such wish when she's not present. If she heard it, there would be a great argument and commotion in your house. These are Christian husbands. I have a daughter. I wish that any Jew from Parabas was her husband than a Christian. We waste time, I pray, give the sentence. A pound of the martyr's flesh is yours. The court awards it to you according to the law of Venice. Most rightful judge. And you must cut this flesh from off his breast. The law allows it to you and the court awards it. Most learned judge. A sentence. Come, prepare. Wait a moment. There's something else. This bond does not give you a single drop of blood. The words say clearly, a pound of flesh. Take your pound of flesh according to the bond. But while cutting the flesh, if you shed a single drop of blood of this Christian, by Venetian law, your lands and properties will all be confiscated and transferred to the state. Oh, upright judge, mark to, oh, learned judge. 
Is that the law? You can check the law, but as you want justice, be assured that you shall have justice more than you desire. Oh, learned judge, Mar, do a learned judge. I shall take the previous offer of three times the bond money. I shall then let the Christian go. Here is the money. Gently, the Jew shall have full justice. There is no hurry. He shall have nothing but the penalty. Oh, Jew, an upright judge, a learned judge. Therefore, prepare to cut off the flesh of Antonio. Do not shed any blood. You should also not cut more or less. Just one pound of flesh and nothing else. Eat the weight of the flesh. Cut is off by one hair. You will die and all your properties will be confiscated. A second, Daniel. A Daniel, you now in federal. I have you on the run. Why does the Jew pause? Take the flag that you have earned. Give me my principal and let me go. I have it ready. Here it is. He has deposed it in the open court. He shall have only justice and his bond. A great judge. I say why judge indeed. I thank you, you for teaching me that word. Can I not have only my principal? You shall have nothing what you have won, which you must take very carefully. Why? Then let him benefit. I have no more question. I will go. Wait, you. You are not yet free to go. According to Venetian laws, if it can be proved that either directly or indirectly, someone was planning to kill a citizen, that the half of the party's <clears throat> property and goods will go to the other party, and other half will go to the state. You plotted against the life of the defendant, and I have told you of the great danger you were putting the defendant into. Now you are the guilty one, and therefore you should beg mercy of the Jew. Beg for your permission to hang yourself. But as your wealth and property will be forfeited to the state, you will not give him have money to buy a robe for hanging. Therefore, you must be hanged at the state's expenses. You will see the difference in our spirits. I pardon you and spare your life before you ask for it. I award half of your wealth to Antonio. Instead of asking you to transfer the other half to the state, I shall be kind on you and impose a fine on you. Yes, for the state, not for Antonio. No, take my life and all. Do not pardon anything. What mercy can you render him, Antonio? A beating in public like a halter, nothing else. My lord and all the court, I am content if the court stops imposing the fine, if he first becomes a Christian and then records a gift that when he dies, everything will go to his son-in-law, Lorenzo, and his daughter who married a Christian. He shall do all these, otherwise I will withdraw the pardon. Are you content, Jew? What do you say? I am content. Clerk, draw up a deed of gift. I pray, give me permission to go from here. I'm not feeling well. Send the deed to my home, I will sign it. I give you permission to go, but be sure to sign the deed. If I had been the judge, I would have sent you to the callows for hanging, not to the pond for standing. End. Thank you. By I unmute, I unmute first. Okay.
Well done. Thank you very much. All the actors and actresses, two actresses, you did very well and you didn't halter. You didn't halt. It was very good. I, I hope the audience loved it also. And the audience, by the way, this is a pronunciation exercise. Understand? They learned uh, pronunciation by acting. They learn pronunciation by reciting poems. They learn pronunciation by speaking. They learn pronunciation by singing. So this is one of the activities for learning pronunciation. So thank you very much again to the actors and actresses. We'll do more plays. Now we have got a, a, a virtual theater group, ZVT. Okay, so we will be doing many things. And you people who are present, as well as those who acted, if you are teachers, you have the script of this play. So you please do do it at your school. You can do it at your school. Okay, so uh, as long as you say, okay, this was, I, I did the translation into normal English. The original English is pretty tough. huh? thou and thy and all this thing. I translated and shortened it. So you can use it freely as long as you don't claim it to be yours. If you claim it to be yours, it will not be right, right? Will it be right? Huh? Okay, so thank you very much. So how um, quotes 